there's a little breakout right there on Bitcoin. It's the first little breakout that we've seen for some time. So smash up the likes for that as you are coming in to this video. We've changed the lighting up. So let me know what you think about this. But let me talk to you about this Bitcoin price action because I think that if we're able to get above this resistance level right now, it could be off to new all-time highs. And what's really exciting about that particular zone of resistance is that we have already tested it so many times at this stage now, right? We've already been making good use of this resistance zone. And, you know, the thing is, is that this resistance zone didn't even exist until pretty much like here in late March 2024, which means that all of the price action we really ever developed around this resistance zone happened right here in this 60 day period and i think that's a really big deal i think that's really important in this market because now that we're getting back up to here again and now that we've actually been consolidating by the way for 14 days right it has been two weeks that we've actually been consolidating here now that it's been that period of time i actually think that we have a pretty decent chance of breaking this particular zone of resistance if we do end up getting here. And I want to, again, continue to elaborate on that. Uh, and of course, as usual, also show you guys what might happen if we don't do that and if we actually fall to the other side here. So again, if you are excited for this one, do me a favor and smash that like, subs, check that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. Uh, and of course, you've got some phenomenal offers available to you with the links down below, including Blowfin, which is a no KYC exchange uh, giving you some fantastic bonuses and I do think that they are one of the best exchanges uh, in the space right now uh, that are kind of coming up so definitely check it out if you are interested uh, but let's come back to the video here before we talk about that a little bit more uh, and like I said you know previously when we were kind of in this range up here this was a seven day time frame over here this took about eight days so we have now spent the most time up here and again what we've really been doing here is just kind of getting comfortable and consolidating at a zone of resistance and so I think that's actually really important and another thing that we've been doing is we have been proving that resistance is serving as resistance, support is serving as support. Again, which is absolutely fantastic because it shows us that the market is behaving exactly as we would want it to in really nice and healthy ways. Okay, so I'm definitely liking that particular sign there. And I also think that we've broken out of a, uh, you know, kind of trend line here, which is interesting, right? I mean, this was a bit of a descending triangle. I might have spoken about it with you guys recently. I can't really remember, but it's something that I was watching and we have now gotten a small breakout above this range now. So that is also interesting. I think what's more interesting than that is the S&P 500 saw a small pullback here, uh, you know, but Bitcoin just kind of moved up, which I thought was pretty good. Uh, and I think now that the S&P 500 has also pulled off a pull, back now it has produced a pullback uh you know perhaps it's going to be poised to rise up a little bit more right perhaps now it's got some clearer skies to rise up a little bit so i'm definitely going to be looking at that um if we do bring it back to the bitcoin chart though there's a lot more that i want to cover with you here because i do think that some of this is really interesting and i also want to cover some trade setups with you all in this youtube video so definitely stick around for me uh to get there uh but Given how we've really not established much price history around here, uh, you know, I think that if we are going to come up for another test, this is probably going to break the $71,000 price level. And beyond there, you know, you could definitely argue that we're going to have a little bit of resistance up here at 72. You could argue that we're going to have a little bit of resistance up here at 74. And I think that those arguments would be valid, but uh, I'm really not worried about them. You know, at this stage in the market, uh, you know, we've pretty much overcome every single zone of resistance. Uh, I cannot make myself feel worried about these particular all time highs. Zones. I think that it shouldn't be too much of a problem. We'll probably just, you know, maybe maybe a small drop, but I wouldn't really anticipate much. Uh, and of course, you know, even in breaking this particular zone of resistance, I think at this stage, if we are able to get above it, maybe we get a small rejection. But, you know, I would expect that, you know, worst case scenario, we kind of paint something a bit like this, form an ascending triangle of sorts, right? And then get that breakout. Uh, and then, of course, if we're going to be talking about upside, that discussion becomes uh, a lot more interesting as well, because we don't have any price history, right? Above the all-time high. So it's pretty much just clear skies. You pick a number and your guess would be as good as mine. Uh, obviously, there are some levels that we can, you know, apply some analysis to reach and I can cover that with you as well. Uh, but, you know, broadly speaking, it's the psychological levels, right? So 75K is right around the corner. Above that, it's 80, 85, 88, whatever, you know, any kind of round number, any number that sounds interesting. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's really not going to be a particularly technical discussion. Um, and we've also got some really good confluence here with some of our indicators as well, right? So if we take a look at this on the daily time frame with our EMA ribbon, we've seen a big bounce off that ribbon. Now, I wouldn't call it big, but it's definitely been a nice bounce off that ribbon now, about 5% here within just a few days. Um, and 
I think that if we are going to be looking at this thing continue to rise up from here, then yes, this EMA ribbon has served us very well. Uh, obviously, it flips bullish and we've established a nice spread here. So I think that's absolutely fantastic. If we take a look at this on the four hour time frame with the Ichimoku cloud, we've bounced off that Ichimoku cloud. So again, this is actually something that we were looking at both of these things, all of these things actually are on this YouTube channel. So it is really nice that we are getting some follow through. Uh, of course, you know, kind of on the flip side, if it doesn't quite end up working out, uh, then this zone is support. And it's actually really good support. This zone uh, continues to hold up as very good support, in my opinion, for a few different reasons. Uh, the main ones are, uh, you know, this fixed range volume profile still showing us that we have our point of control at the 67k range. Now it is a little bit higher than it used to be because we've moved up a little bit, but it's still basically at the same price level here at about 67k and i think that tells us a lot about uh you know where we might be able to find a little bit of support and obviously you can just look at these spikes right here as well right anywhere you get these big spikes is where you'd probably expect some support if you're above them uh, which means that the next zone of support if we fail uh, is going to be down here at 63 64 in my opinion i will come back to that in just a second the second reason that i think the 67k level is still super important is the fibonacci setup right if you draw a fibonacci from the absolute low down here to the all time high up here, you're going to see that our 382 support level comes in right at that $67,000 price level. So that's a lot of things that line up with the same price level, right? To recap, that's the daily EMA ribbon, four hour Ichimoku cloud, VPVR, and Fibonacci level. And of course, it's just a horizontal level, which I mean, I should have said that one first, because that's the most important one, in my opinion. Uh, you know, and so to me, that is a very, very big deal. Ladies and gents, smash up the likes for such a beautiful support level. And for another walking treadmill video, I am loving this. Uh, it is something that makes me way more inclined to make videos and live streams. You know, if I know that I can get a couple of steps in as well, it just feels even more efficient, which is great. Uh, but yeah, very, very important price level. However, if it does end up failing, then, you know, for me, you know, it's still not particularly horrible, right? I did say in the last video, anything below this were bearish, anything below, above this were bullish. And I still think that's true, uh, but it's a bit of an oversimplification, and that's why I make these videos a lot longer, because, uh, you know, we're still going to have a lot of support, right? You saw that beautiful big spike on the VPVR, um, you know, you saw the uh, Fibonacci, perhaps, maybe not, because I didn't actually talk about it, but that 618 level coming in over here at the $63,000 price level. Obviously, this is where we saw a lot of rejections. It's where we saw some support. This is an important price level. And so if the market does end up failing 67K, I would definitely still anticipate that 64K, 63K can be an interesting zone for Bitcoin. Uh, and of course, failing that, we do still have the floor at about 60K, right? So there are still a couple of interesting price levels on this chart, but the fact is we are now at the top uh, and we are pushing higher. So I think that is a very, very good sign for the market here, uh, potentially indicating that that breakout could be coming. And again, now that the S&P 500 has produced a pullback, if it is going to be able to rise up from here, uh, I think Bitcoin has paved its way to get that breakout as well. Uh, and, you know, just mind you, by the way, it has been, you know, from the moment that we set the all time high up until right now, it has been eight days and from the moment that we entered the sixty thousand dollar price range it's been 96 days so that is a lot of time because if you actually go ahead and zoom out and look at what this chart has been producing over time here uh you know we can get a better look at this on the logarithmic scale Take a look at what the chart has been showing us, ladies and gents. We have had a very, very clear pattern from the beginning of trend up, go sideways, trend up, go sideways, trend up, go sideways, right? So if we're going to be continuing that, then that actually makes a lot of sense. And, you know, again, I'm always interested in the characteristics of the market, right? And to me, the characteristic that this in particular is displaying is that the market is not uh, bear is, is not allowing itself to get bearish enough to pull back um, you know, significantly. Uh, however, it's a confused market. Uh, and that's why it's trading sideways for a lot of time as well. So, uh, you know, both of them are corrections, whether you trade down or you trade sideways, you're still going to correct. I would argue that these kind of corrections are worse because they take a hell of a lot longer. Uh, but, you know, different people are going to have different opinions. I actually think most people agree with me. You know, most people don't want to wait. Uh, I'm definitely like that. But, you know, if I have to, then I have to. I'm not going to uh, fight that too much because obviously the markets will punish you if you try and uh, impose your will on them. So uh, that is something that I always try and keep in mind 
uh, right here with my trading as well. Um, so that is absolutely cool. Now, a couple of things that I want to talk about aside of Bitcoin are Bitcoin's dominance as well, right? So Bitcoin's dominance, you guys know the deal. I've been expecting this for a long time. Uh, you know, if you have been subscribed, you're going to know all about this. Uh, you know, ever since we were very, very low, I was calling for 60% Bitcoin dominance. We're now well on our way. Uh, you know, we have seen a small increase. Obviously, we've seen a pullback because of the Ethereum ETF and stuff like that. Uh, but we did previously use this zone as resistance. We're now using it as support. So that is a very clear sign that this is still going in my favor the way I was expecting. Uh, and of course, you know, we did clear that box of resistance. And, you know, so that you know, the next zone is going to be 60%. So that's going to be something that I'm continuing to take a look at. And, you know, on that note, I think Ethereum is actually a very interesting chart because it has actually come up to this diagonal trend line of resistance as I was covering with you previously. But we're now seeing a small pullback. And I think what's important about this is that previously when Ethereum hit this zone of resistance, it was generally fairly quick, right? Our rejections. On this occasion here, we hit it and, you know, we're still kind of here for about nine days, which is, you know, a, a fair bit longer than we've ever done at this particular zone. So I don't want you guys to, I, I do want you guys to keep that in mind because if you're an Ethereum buff, if, you, if you're somebody that really likes Ethereum, then you're actually probably going to find that to be quite bullish because again, it's just like I said with Bitcoin, if you're consolidating at all-time highs or consolidating at resistance levels, then that can actually be your sign that you're going to be breaking out. So that's something that I'm going to be continuing to watch uh, um, out here. And obviously, you know, the, the other thing is that we have kind of cleared this horizontal zone of resistance down here uh, at the 0.5 BTC per token level as well. So, uh, you know, do you think Ethereum is going to break out? I'm actually quite curious on what you guys think in the comment section down below. The reason that this is such a big deal to me, and I've covered this a couple of times with you on this YouTube channel, is that in my experience, Ethereum is one of the easiest ways to make money in the crypto game. Uh, you know, I have been bearish on Ethereum pretty much since right at the top, which is when I sold every single ethereum token that i own right here pretty much um you know and that is because i've just got brilliant foresight uh, <laughs> and um uh, and, and and of course uh you know and I, I do still hold very very little ethereum maybe like i don't know like i said just just a very very little bit which i forgot to sell maybe uh on a different exchange but pretty much all of it went up there uh you know and i've still been expecting this box or this red line to be hit we didn't quite get there um you know and i don't really think that this is the bottom either uh and the reason that i personally don't think it's the bottom but i still want to know your reasoning in the comment section so just tell me and pause the video and then come back the reason i think it's not the bottom is because uh you know bitcoin doesn't to me bitcoin doesn't look like it, ha uh, it it's finished its uptrend uh, you know, and if Bitcoin does get a breakout, then what you're actually going to see is that Ethereum used this chance of sideways trading for 96 days to get a pump. However, uh, you know, as soon as that spotlight comes back on Bitcoin, you don't want to take um, excess risk in the market to make money anymore because you're already making money with the safe asset being BTC, okay? So if BTC does get that breakout, uh, you know, above that $70,000 range, not only do I think that could be explosive, but I also think that could leave all the other coins um, in a path of dust uh, behind Bitcoin. Uh, and of course, that would almost always include Ethereum as well. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. And additionally, if Bitcoin crashes, then nobody wants any crypto and people sell altcoins too. So it's not great for Ethereum from both perspectives there. And that's why I think it's not surprising that Ethereum only manages to pump up while Bitcoin is raging sideways. But of course, if that's going to come to a resolution sooner, we're going to start to see that change then I think this could be a chart that has a little bit of trouble up ahead. So uh, I'm going to be watching this. I'm very open to being wrong. It's okay. It's happened before. It'll keep happening. You know, I've been wrong before. Um, you know, I'm not uh, upset if I'm wrong or anything like that. Uh, so I'm going to watch this. If we do get the breakout above here, then I'm going to have to really reconsider my stance on Ethereum. That doesn't mean I'm going to buy, right? I'd still expect Ethereum to drop, right? So if we come up here, I'd still be saying, yeah, but I might buy down here. But it might just remove my bias that we come all the way down to the zero four BTC per token level. Uh, obviously, it would be very nice for me to pick it up down here because I sold it at zero eight, uh, you know, and so I get to uh, double my Ethereum holdings. Uh, and of course, I would probably look at selling them back up at zero eight, or if not significantly higher, if we get it, uh, and that would double my Bitcoin, right? So that's going to be something that I am definitely interested in seeing how I can play. Uh, so I'm going to be watching that uh, and keeping you guys updated. This is an important chart to me. Uh, I still don't 
feel particularly worried, but it doesn't matter anyway. I'm just happy to wait for a little bit. Uh, if we take a look at the dollar, we have seen it continue to slide down a little bit. If it's going to continue to slide down here, it has a long way to go until it reaches the bottom of its support range. This would be the dollar $60,000 level, for example. That's Bitcoin's equivalent. Uh, it's got a fair bit it could slide down to get there. Uh, and if we take a look at some of the altcoins here, let's just start off with some of the ones in the list here. Uh, we still haven't seen resolutions to these price ranges quite yet. They are still kind of trading sideways here. These look pretty bearish to me, to be honest. Uh, you know, we're in a downtrend and then they're just consolidating. I don't know. Uh, you guys might have different takes. Obviously, meme coins have been doing quite spectacular. I was telling you guys about Trump mania and my god ladies and gents since i told you about that uh this coin has done incredibly well uh, obviously it is a total uh shit coin meme coin it, it's actually a little bit more than that they, they have got some uh some more substance behind them than other meme coins but uh you know you guys know the deal uh this, this is just the degenerous uh de the degeneracy uh that's kind of taken over and it's really funny actually because on their twitter profile uh they were talking about precisely that the uh degeneracy of of all the holders but uh i i think that's fantastic i mean uh, this coin has been doing very very well is it going to keep going up i don't know uh i still hold a big chunk of my uh team mania token so i'm anticipating it to go up if you want to check it out you're going to find the link to it in the description below here is the soul scan uh website as well the soul scan page so you can check this out it is of course a solana based meme coin uh, and it is taking advantage of the trump saga uh, that's going on right now so shout out to those of you uh that uh, are already in it in a bit of a profit like i said i don't know how long that's gonna last when these things drop and of course generally they will drop i don't know when it could take a while it could be soon i don't know but when they do drop they're gonna drop really hard uh, so you got to keep that in mind, uh, but we're in crypto, so that's not surprising, and uh, and it should feel pretty normal by now. So, uh, you know, I'm okay with it, and I've been loving this ride with T Mania. Uh, it has been some pretty pretty decent profit, and I'm going to continue to talk about meme coins on this channel, guys. You're going to be hit with a bit of content on that uh, in these next coming days and weeks. So let me know what you think about that in the comments, and yeah, if you don't like it, don't worry about it because the main content style is not going to change. We take a look at Pepe right here. We are. Uh, pretty much still sitting pretty happy at these all-time high type levels just consolidating perhaps getting ready to move up there's very little try analysis you can do here so i'm not going to bother <laughs> and if we take a look at doge uh pretty much a similar case i don't really want to look at that chart um let's take a look at dot uh yeah trending up pretty nicely here for dot actually we have formed an uh ascending parallel channel here um not a whole lot more I could say about that. Though. I don't really think that this is particularly tradable. So I think, you know, for Bitcoin, the next trade that I'm probably seeing is going to be, if we zoom in, uh, you know, there is obviously a resistance short up here, but I don't think that's smart. Uh, you know, there is the 67K level, but I think that's been tested quite a bit. So I think the safest position to trade right now, and actually the best position that we might get um, is going to be this one for me. Uh, you know, that's definitely going to be the, uh, the kind of trade that I want to be taking. And the reason for that is we haven't actually flipped this level into support yet, even though we've gotten above it a couple of times. I think that if we do get above it this time, given that the, you know, given the fact that things have been slower, right? I mean, if you take a look at this from the moment that we kind of break out, uh, broke out from this price level up to the all time, up to the breakout of this blue box, it took 11 days. Uh, but on this occasion here uh, to get above the box, well, it hasn't even happened yet and it would be 30 days, right? So we have definitely been slower and that does make me think that, you know, maybe, maybe the breakout could be slower. Uh, you know, it could be that we break out and just very, very quickly come down. It could be that we break out and fuck around and then come down. Um, you know, so I, either way, I'm not too worried, but I think that would be a really nice, safe, healthy entry. It's obviously been tested quite a bit. Uh, and of course, like I said, some phenomenal opportunities to trade these markets below because you're getting huge cash bonuses when you do start trading using my links below, including right here uh, with Belowfin uh, a little bit uh, lower in the description. This is a no KYC exchange, meaning that they're not going to ask you for a picture of yourself or your ID, uh, which is very, very cool. And if you do want to get in on that, I'm just trying to find the link to it. I can't, uh, I already opened it, but uh, ah, there we go. Uh, right here, uh, very, very cool platform here. You've got some pretty accessible rewards as well when you do start trading uh, on this exchange. So definitely go ahead and check it out if you are interested. Uh, they do look pretty solid, uh, especially compared to the other players in the game. So 
uh, good stuff there. Uh, and with that, ladies and gents, if you have enjoyed this video, I'm going to be heading off. So definitely make sure that you do subscribe, uh, hit the like button, all that good stuff. Double check that you've got the bell icon checked so that you don't miss out on this very time-sensitive content. And go get your steps in, legends. I'll see you all in the next one.